My name is Dr. Sanjay Mehrotra. Uh, I've been in Bangalore for more than nearing 20 years. I work for Narayana Hidyalia uh, with Dr. Shetty. I've been working, uh, I've been doing cardiology for more than somewhere around 30 years. Uh, and uh, presently I, I do a lot of interventional cardiology where we do all kinds of things including uh, of course uh, the simplistic way of saying is to do something called as an angioplasty but the extensions of that are now reached to even changing valves we can change your valves without an operation uh, so, so the cardiology the interventional cardiology is not a surgical job but it is a job which we do without operating we don't cut you um, can you hear me here with this one no, all right. It's a bit of an echo. No, but he wants it. He wants it. They want to record that. So I've been in. Uh, I, I, I've been trained in cardiology. I finished my postgraduate training of cardiology somewhere around '91 from North India. Uh, then I worked in U.S. for some time. I worked in U.K. for some time. It was a faculty at the Narayana, uh, sorry, the St. John's Medical College Hospital. Uh, for about seven years and since the inception of uh, Narayana Hridayalaya, I've been working there. Um, and my interest primarily are interventional cardiology and I have a specific interest in interventional cardiology which is called the interventions and in aorta. Um, you know, we can, we can treat your big pipe or the big pump pipe through which the heart pumps blood into your body without an operation. So it's called as interventions of the aorta and recently we do valve changes uh, of human heart uh, not of a dead person but of course of a live person we replace the valve without an operation so these are my specific interests but I also have an interest that in the next 10 years I will look at uh, preventive cardiology and um, as one of the areas where I think you would be surprised to know a very a large percentage of our young and I must say that uh, as parents you people don't understand the disadvantage of obesity in children in this country and uh, you know India is called as the world capital of diabetes uh, and we would have more and more uh, heart disease in this country uh, my son who is not a cardiologist or a doctor uh, we always used to have this talk that uh, um, you know, you, if you will never have a future without patients in this country if you do cardiology. So with that, <laughs> with that background, uh, what I have thought is that I would be telling you a bit about why heart disease happens and then we will go into the basics and some understanding about how our attitudes is important in causing disease. And I think this is what most of the people should understand that the disease is created in our heads and it expresses itself in our bodies. Unfortunately, when we get disease, we get completely confined to the body. And that's where the disease even hits you more. But before we go into that kind of a development uh, of understanding, um, what are humans? Humans are basically biological machines made out of about 2 million types of proteins running on the energy of ATP converted from glucose and fat. This is a bit of a scientific sentence but I'll tell you what it means. So basically our each cell is a kind of a unit of this machine which generates and works for us and we, our fuel is glucose. The energy produced by uh, the cell is produced from the fuel which is glucose which is what we eat and our structure what we are made of or we can call the matter in us is made of proteins and proteins are made of type carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. The polypeptide chains and our cell basically manufactures this whole structure. So we are living matter which is made up of proteins and uh, ATP is the 
kind of a chemical substance which is produced by the cell with the use of glucose. So glucose is metabolized in the cell to produce energy by which we work. Every cell of our body including your brain, your head, your eyes, your skin, your tissues of the body, your stomach, everything needs glucose and oxygen for its production of its energy because we need energy for working. And it has these uh, various parts. So we have what you call as the digestive system and the breathing system. So by digestive system we eat, we eat food. The food is metabolized into the simpler form and gets absorbed from our stomach lining after being treated. For example, the absorption starts from the stomach itself and ultimately the fluid is broken into the smaller components and it gets absorbed from the intestine and gets collected from the blood, through the blood from the intestine into the liver. And to make the work of the cells because the blood is the provider of the food as well as the oxygen to the cells because blood is circulating. So blood's job is, the pump heart's pump job is to provide this food into each cell. And that cell uses the energy which is in the form of glucose to burn and produce energy by with the help of oxygen. So we have to breathe in the oxygen. So when you, are, you breathe in, the oxygen or the air comes in contact with these blood carrying tubes and it extracts the oxygen. So the blood which is in the lungs when it's purified, it gets collected from the lungs, goes into the heart, from the heart it is back pumped into the body, the body uses the blood because it needs the oxygen and the, that used blood is coming back into the heart, from the heart it's pumped back into the lungs. So this cycle is going on. So when we use the oxygen, the blood becomes devoid of oxygen because the cells of the body use that oxygen to do their metabolism. So they are alive because the oxygen is coming to the cell. And the respiratory system's job, our lungs, its job is to provide that oxygen and the carbon dioxide, dioxide is thrown out. Now when we, when we go back and this, the job of heart and its tube system which we call as the vascular system is to provide the blood to the tissues, take back the blood, bring it to the heart, take it back into the lungs, mix with oxygen, bring it back to the heart. So the circulatory system does the job of providing blood and oxygen to the whole body. And in this process of metabolism, we generate certain toxic substances which are not required for the body. So they have to be thrown out of the body. And they are thrown out from where? Through our excretory system, which is what is the, you throw it out the urine. So all products of the metabolism of the cell are then thrown out of the body through the kidneys and we excrete in the form of urine. And whatever the waste of the eating is thrown out of our body by excreta. And of course we have the reproduction system to continue our progeny. That's how the machine works. I have not talked about the brain right now because I'm going to spend some more time in the brain because that's where the most important art, this part of our discussion is. So that's, this is, these are the parts of the machine. Now let me jump to what are the common diseases we come across. The most common is what we call as cardiovascular. Cardiovascular means heart and its vessel system. They are the most common and in which the most common is you can ask in simple terms a heart attack. Now I'm going to spend some time why we get heart attack, why we get these blockages in the heart artery which is I think is an information which is essential for people to know. And this is CVA, CVA means cardiovascular accidents. So the stroke of the brain where you get paralyzed, that is also part of the same problem, cardiovascular system problem. And then you have other vascular diseases, for example, you can get blockages in your leg arteries. So when you walk, you will get pain in your legs. And this is again the narrowing in the arteries of the legs. So the process of this disease of the vascular tree is 
what is responsible for causing various these diseases and the two conditions which you are which are the most common are the hypertension or we call as high blood pressure and the next common is diabetes the and the diabetes people usually understand sugar that my blood sugar is high but unfortunately all of you need to understand that if your sugar is high each and every cell of your body is diseased and it will hasten the degeneration of your body unless you look after it the unfortunate thing is which i am trying to tell you that in this time of our existence we have become too much sedentary we eat too much and we don't burn our calories too much and that's the problem so these are the problems of economical development when you become economically more rich you eat and you eat energy rich food and that causes diabetes especially in our country where the diet is very very rich in carbohydrates and because the carbohydrates which are the for example the the substance the sugars which we eat which may be sweet sugars or unsweet sugars they are all like for example rice or or wheat or or uh, or sugars they have to be metabolized uh, by use of insulin the insulin is produced by pancreas the job of the insulin is to transfer the glucose from the blood into the cell it pushes the blood glucose into the cell because as i told you that this cell is using glucose as its fuel it's burning the glucose to produce energy and insulin uses insulin helps the glucose to get inside the cell now if you eat too much then the insulin has to be produced more and more and one day the poor pancreas says it's enough boss i can't take it anymore and you have misused me too much and now it says i stop working the pancreatic cells die and they don't produce any more enough insulin so what happens your sugar will not be able to push into the cell when it's not pushed into the cell the cells are now suffering with no fuel there's no petrol so they will start finding another way to produce energy and that is what is harmful to us the alternative way of producing energy is comes from breaking breakdown of the muscles so what will happen to sugar levels in the blood that it will go high because it cannot be pushed into the cells so your blood sugar level go up and because the cell have to now metabolize by a different mechanism it starts breaking the muscles so you must have seen most most to diabetics will complain i get very tired very soon usse chala nahi jata pairo mein dard hota hai and that is a first sign that your glucose is high because your sugar is not being metabolized properly by lack of insulin so these are the two most important causes of our disease in the body now let me jump to what are the heart disease and how it affects us and i think this is a common question asked by people what is heart attack what is angina what are the symptoms of heart attack because this is my area so i'm going to speak a bit about that and then we'll move forward from there how is the heart attack treated uh, is there any way to reduce the chance of a heart attack and you know that heart is a organ which is pumping blood into the body and as i said that each organ of the body needs blood for itself so these are the tubes which you see here these are the tubes of the heart which are called as the heart arteries they are supplying blood to the muscle for the muscle to pump now these are the tube which get this process of narrowing and this narrowing process in our scientific term is called as atherosclerosis that you deposit fat inside the arterial wall and this is how it looks like that you have a normal vessel and this is a plaque we call it plaque and this is how it looks like in the real time it's like fat like substance which get deposited in the wall of the artery and this is a plaque now when it becomes larger obviously it's going to reduce the size of the lumen when the lumen of the artery is narrowed for example suppose there is a narrowing in this artery which is that plaque is somewhere here 
the blood flow down the stream would be less. So when you have to do a bit of a work, suppose you have to walk a bit fast and you carry a bit of weight and the blood, the heart needs to pump more blood into your body because you're running. And when you walk fast and you run, you, the heart has to put you, pump more blood into your system because the body needs more blood. And to do the job, heart's muscle has to contract more vigorously. But if there is a narrowing there, the blood will not reach this territory and it will cause a discomfort in your chest. And that is what we call as angina. Now you can have these blockages and of course all of us, to your, for your information, start this disease when we are 10 to 15 years of age, unfortunately. And the problem of today's world is that our children are becoming obese. So they will all get diabetes early in their life if they don't look after themselves early in life. There's too much emphasis on eating. So if you eat too much, you obviously burn more uh, sources or the energy which is required to maintain the body. And that's where the diabetes comes. And when the diabetes comes, everything gets affected. Now, you can have these blockages and they will grow from 10 years if they start growing, say, 10 to 12 years of age, I, by the time you are, and it takes time to grow, something which now become 80%, 90% in one or two days, you ask this question, how much is the percentage of the block? That question is a common question when patients come to us. And we say it's about 70, 80%, but something which is 70, 80% will not become 70, 80% in one day. It will take years to become 70, 80%. And suppose you start the disease at 15 years of age, in about two decades, which is about, say, another 20 years, it may become important. So if you start thinking and controlling it in an early age, obviously you are going to live longer. What kills you the most in our life? Heart disease, unfortunately, or this process of blockages. Now you may have a blockage, but it may not cause a heart attack. So why do we get the heart attack is the second question. And what happens is that, uh, I think I've discussed this, this atherosclerosis division can cause angina heart attack and its complications. So this particular plaque which I have shown you here, which has got this cap, you see this cap? So this cap may be thick here and thin here. So there is an interaction point there where when the heart muscle is moving, it is causing a kind of a contralateral or causing opposite movements. And what is the material which is filled inside? What is the integrity of this cap, which is we call as the fibrous cap? If it is very thin, and if this material is very soft, it can break here and rupture. And this is called as a plaque rupture. And this plaque rupture is responsible for causing heart attack. So you may have a block which is 80%, but it never ruptures and you will never get a heart attack. You will only get angina, that even you walk, there is not enough blood going down, so you will get some test discomfort, you slow down, it will go away, that's all right. But what happens to the plaque when it ruptures? And the factors which are responsible for rupture of this plaque, let me show you one more picture and you will understand. So this is an artery, this is the diagrammatic representation, this is the plaque and this is a rupturing of a plaque and when it rupture, this is the blood inside the lumen. So when this lumen gets this narrowing, the flow through this is still happening. When it ruptures, the content inside get exposed to the flowing blood and blood has a tendency to clot when it is exposed to the substance inside and the artery gets completely blocked. So when you get a complete blockage of an artery, there's no flow downstream and the person will suffer a heart attack. And what, why we say go to the hospital immediately, it's very common for people to feel a gas-like sensation in the chest at that moment. And they will say, gas ho jata. Chalta hon, mujhe gas ho jata. It's never a gas. And a lot of doctors also ignore the symptom. And I have had so many examples of patients who come and say, last night I went to the doctor, he didn't do my ECG and I said, Mereko gas bhara hai, and they give him Rantec, go home. Tomorrow morning, next morning, he suffered a heart attack. Now the important thing is that once you block the flow, the heart muscle can only last for about six hours. 
after that it's permanently damaged. Damage means that if you damage a certain portion of the heart muscle, it cannot be reversed. It is damaged forever. If you don't get a heart attack, you have blockages, nothing will happen to you. Your muscle will remain still strong. But if your muscle get damaged, then that part of the muscle of the heart is no more pumping. So your pump will become weak and it has a consequence in your life. If you damage your pulse by 40 percent, your, your muscle by 40 percent, you cannot survive. So most of the time when the damage is small, the heart attack is small, patients come to our hospital and say, I want to go home. And nothing wrong with you, why are you keeping us? And because the damage is less and they don't feel anything wrong with them and they want to run away from the hospital. And you get patients who pump has failed completely, they go into something called a cardiogenic shock where there is no pump and their urine will not form, um, and their blood pressure will drop to less than 90 and they will become cold and clammy. They, they feel very cold and they have an impending sense of death in such patients. So that condition can have a spectrum of very mild damage to a massive damage. So they call it massive heart attack. And this is where the muscle preservation is important. So if you reach within a certain time to the hospital, we can dissolve this pluck, this blood by giving a medication. That's where we give the injection or we can also open by an angioplasty. So if you have any suspicion of a heart attack, or a, or a pain or a gas which is not going, you should try to reach the hospital as early as possible. Unfortunately, this happens mostly after a very heavy meal which you have taken at 10 o'clock after two drinks at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the morning. And at that time, most of the people are sleeping. They don't want to get up. The family doesn't want to get up unless they're very, very aware about these things. So, we'll see you tomorrow. And by sabere, you have got the six to seven hours are gone and you have damaged the muscle. If you reach within a certain time, you can reverse this damage and your heart will not be damaged forever. Because once the heart is damaged, you cannot repair it. You, it be, becomes waste. And that is why I think the main aim of this communication to you is that you should not ignore if there is any suspicion that I may be suffering a heart attack. You should go to the hospital, get an ECG done. 99% of the patient you can rule out a heart attack by simple ECG. And if the ECG is normal, you are not suffering a heart attack. And you can come back and sleep again. So it's important that we, we, we do not ignore it. So a heart attack is nothing but, for example, this patient has a blocked artery here. This muscle will get damaged and this is what we call a heart attack. I have already told you. Now this is a, again a diagnostic representation of the same. This is a normal artery, this is a blocked artery, this is a ruptured plaque and the flow stopped. There's no flow going down. Same thing is here, there's a blood clot formation. Now this blood clot formation can be reversed by a clot buster medication which is called as TPA, streptokinase. You can inject it through a vein and the person's heart attack will reverse in the next one hour or two hours and he will say, Mera pain come ho gaya. my pain is much less and he feels more relaxed. So it is important to recognize so that your future life is not affected by it. And this is the probably one communication I would like to provide to you. Now what does person experience during this kind of a uh, happening? So patient will feel sweating. They may find themselves difficult to breathe. Uh, it can cause a collapse. If the blood pressure falls suddenly you will faint and you will fall and you will have no strength in you. And most of the time, a pain of a heart attack doesn't get relieved by the sorbitrate tablet which a lot of people put underneath the tongue. Angina will get relieved by the sorbitrate, this will not. And, if, and it may actually drop your pressure further, so if people feel more perspiring at that time. And if that is happening, it's better go to the hospital immediately. Why there is so much of heart disease in our country and, and we are going through a phase in our life, uh, when our socio-economic development, that most of the urban dwellers are have capacity to buy more energy-rich food and eat it, but not burn it. Fifty years ago, all of us uh, will not will not go in an automated vehicle. We will walk most of the places. So, whatever you eat, you burn it out. If you burn it out, all that will have no scope of depositing anywhere. 
and the time comes in most of the people's lives that money becomes immaterial because now you have disease and as soon as you get the disease then you become more concerned about the body and when you get concerned about the body your healing of the body disappears your healing doesn't take place you actually degenerate your body faster if you are more concerned about the body of course you have to look after it if there's a problem but I will come to that next now there was a very very large study which was performed uh, by a uh, by a cardiologist of Indian origin actually he belongs to Bangalore and he used to study in St. John's he was a St. John's graduate uh, his name is Dr. Salim Yusuf works in McMaster University in Canada um, and he did this study called interheart study the interheart study looked at people who were admitted with heart attack and they wanted to find out that what are the risk factors for these heart patients what are the most common causes why this person is having heart attack so they looked at these risk factor and there were nine easy, easily measured risk factors in which top was smoking and high cholesterol high blood pressure diabetes obesity our diet physical activity and alcohol consumption and psychosocial factor and they said that 90% of the people who come with a heart attack have some of them more of them more possibility of disease less of them less possibility and they were all factor were positively related which means if you have them you are more likely to have except two and what that was physical activity and alcohol consumption so if you do more physical activity you are less likely to get heart disease and if you take one small peg or two small peg every day for a long long time your possibility of suffering a heart attack actually is less but we don't we don't ask our patients we don't ask our patients to start drinking but we actually recommend that if you a lot of people come and ask can I drink I have read somewhere that the red wine is good for us so, but I, I, so I ask a question do you drink he said no no I've never drunk but I want to take it <laughs> because uh, I have read that the red wine is good for you so we usually don't recommend them to start drinking for the sake of uh, saving themselves from heart attack but those people who drink regularly a small amount of alcohol up to 80 to 120 ml we say you continue you don't stop it especially if they take it every day now the binge drinking which you do on the weekends is not supposed to